Hi everyone, this is Pierre Rick from P2Design. Blender 4.0 is about to land and with it several critical updates for its rigging system. These updates may break your rig if you have a custom rig UI. In this video we'll check some of these updates and how to fix your custom rig UI. For this presentation, I'm going to use one of the new character rig I created for my upcoming course. You may have already seen it in the first teaser for the course. And if you missed it, just follow the link in the description. If you're familiar with Blender's rigging, you may know that so far Blender was using bone layers to organize the bones. And if you have my Art of Effective Rigging course or if you follow me on this channel, you probably know about the Bone Manager, an add-on developed by Finn that allows you to name your layers and create a custom UI and even export this custom UI as a script. But if you open the same rig in 4.0, you'd be like that, searching for your layers. Well, bone layers don't exist anymore. They are replaced by bone collections. The benefit is that you can create as many collections as you want, and you don't need an add-on to name them. A plan for the future is to be able to nest those collections exactly as our usual scene collections. Beware that the M shortcut to move a bone into a collection may conflict if you still have the bone manager activated. Pressing the M key shortcut will move or assign a bone to a single collection or to a new collection. The shortcut Shift plus M allows you to add the bone to another collection or remove it from another collection. As for our scene collection, a bone can be assigned to one collection or multiple collections. This can also be performed directly through the bone collection panel. We can see which bone collection a bone is assigned to, thanks to the dot icon displayed in front of the collection's name. This bone is currently in all collection but collection D. Collection's visibility can be triggered using the little eye icon on the right. And now we can also add custom properties to a bone collection. If your bone was in a locked layer in your previous version of Blender, it will be marked as unselectable in Blender 4 and above. Bone groups is no longer a thing, so you can stop searching for them any longer. Bone color is now a bone property, and the color of a bone will be displayed in pose mode but also in edit mode. You can find bone color under viewport display. As said before, you can see the color in edit mode, but you can also specify another color when you switch to pose mode. So you can assign two different colors to a single bone. One for edit mode, one for pose mode. By default, the same color will be used in both contexts. The bendy bones behavior has been improved and the pose library too. Check out the release note, link in the description if you want to know more. If you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. Learn actual professional techniques or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. If you generated your custom rig UI using the Bone Manager add-on, or if you did it by hand, it probably looks something like that. And it's similar to the way Rigify generate the custom UI. Each time we create a new row, and then we'll fill this row with those informations. And basically what is displayed is the layer property of the active object, the layer is identified using its index, and it's shown as a button using the label we will specify in text. Now to make sure that the specific rig UI is assigned to the proper armature, each armature has an identification number. And when we run the script, before displaying the rig UI, it checks if the rig ID number fits. If you check out the armature custom properties, you can see that it has one custom property, the rig ID, which is basically a string of random characters. You don't need to know that to fix the rig, but it's always interesting. So basically, since layers don't exist anymore, sourcing the layers to be displayed won't work anymore. What we want instead is to display the bone collection visibility as a button. So we need to know the path to that information. And to do so, I can simply hover over the eye icon and I will see this information. 
Now we don't need to copy it by hand, we can simply right click on the eye icon and choose copy full data path. Or you can use the shortcut shift control alt c. I will paste it in the script so that we have a better look at it. And basically what it says is that it's looking at the armature data of the armature called armature. In those data, the specific collection called layer 2 def gun. And the property exposed is the visibility of this collection. So basically we could use this to replace the layers. But first we can simplify the way we're going to write it by identifying what is common to everything. What's common to all the lines we're going to write down. And basically it's the fact that we are looking at collection. So we can create a variable called collection and say collection is and copy and paste this part of the script. As this is the path to the armature collections. So I can remove this from our full data path and I can simply copy the variable name collection and use it in the script that generates our UI. It will replace the context active object data, but right now it points at all the collections, not a specific collection. So we need to add the name of the collection next to it between brackets and quotation marks, exactly as it was in our full data path. Now the property we want to expose is not layers, but is visible. So between these apostrophe that target a property, we can write down is visible. Index doesn't make sense anymore, we can remove it. And we need to keep the toggle equal true. And the text will be whatever label we want to give to our button. If I run the script now, it should work, but it may not. Often enough, whenever you're editing text as I do, basically butchering it, you will have some indentation problem. First, I can get rid of this line because it's no longer useful. And then I can select all the text I just created, go to format, convert white spaces to tabs. If I now run the script again, I will no longer have an error message. And I have in my rig UI a button called root. And whenever I click on it, it will enable or disable the visibility of the collection def gun. And you can see some bones appearing and disappearing on the gun. Now this button was originally created to display the root bone layer. So I simply need to copy the name of the root bone collection and paste it in the collection name in my script. This is what identifies the collection. It's important to have exactly the same name. Then in the text the label, I can write down whatever I want. Now when I run the script, you can see that I'm enabling and disabling my root bone. And basically that's the trick. So now what I can do is to copy this piece of code and paste it wherever I need it. Then I simply need to put in the right collection name to get the corresponding button. The latest version of Rigify uses another method to generate the custom UI and I don't understand it. Now beware, if you ever rename a collection, then the script won't work anymore because the script uses the bone collection name to point at it. So whenever you change the name of a bone collection, you have to update the script accordingly, pasting the new name. Again, big disclaimer, I'm not a scripter. I'm kind of able to read a bit of Python script. And so far it has been enough for me to create my own custom UI including bone layers and bone collection, read custom properties, and reuse the snap utilities by my friend Finn on all my rigs. There are probably more clever way to do it, but in real time it took me like 5 minutes to fix this rig, and I'm happy to say that all the free rigs on p2designacademy.com are updated for Blender 4 with a specific script, and all the course files of the live animation course have been updated too for Blender 4. I hope you learned something new and you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very very soon.